What's up guys, my name is Brandon and in addition to the iOS 14 public beta, Apple also released the GM build of iOS 13.6 today to both developers and to public beta testers. And this comes one week after the release of iOS 13.6 beta 3. So we're of course going to be diving in and discussing what's new in this update, starting off with the size. So if you did come from beta 3, you can see it is 4.2 gigabytes since it is the gold master copy. And of course we do have all the release notes here as well which i will touch on here in a moment but taking a look at the build number if we go into our settings general about 13.6 you can see there the build number is 17g68 that is the build number for the gm and that will be the build number when the final public release gets released as well and then scrolling down to the modem firmware the modem firmware is unchanged in the gm build from beta 3 it's still at 2.07 Point zero zero on the iPhone 10s, 10s Max series. It could be different depending on your generation of device, but it is unchanged in the GM. Now, one of the big new features in iOS 13.6 is going to be car key. And this is going to be the feature that allows you to unlock your car, start your car, and have a lot of remote functions straight from your smartphone using NFC. So this is only going to be available on the new BMWs when it first comes out. I'm sure there was some kind of exclusive agreement there, but other cars in the future will also be getting this added functionality which is going to be very nice and it is going to be inside of the wallet application you can see here here are some screenshots of what it will look like once you actually have it you know a car that you can use this on so they use the bmw i8 as an example right here now what's also cool about car key is that you can actually share your key with family members or friends you can like send it to them in a text message and you can have it expire at a certain time and things like that so really cool new features here obviously i probably will not be able to test this out even when 13.6 the final public release uh, gets out because i don't have a bmw i8 or a newer bmw but when I do get my hands on something I can try this on, I will let you guys know here on the channel. But this is definitely a big feature included in 13.6. Of course, it is also going to be in iOS 14. Also new in iOS 13.6, if you go to your settings, general software updates, we have the new tab right there for customize automatic updates. And from here, you can specify whether you want your iOS device to download and install or just download and not install your iOS updates if you have them turned on automatically. Or of course, you could turn both off if you don't want anything being installed automatically we also have a new tab inside of health if we go to the browse section right here we now have symptoms where you can go ahead and log any kind of symptoms you may be having especially now with COVID-19 going around and everything like that this is pretty nice to have that way your medical professional or your doctor can see any kind of symptoms you were having prior to your visit or you know you could put them in there afterwards they will have access to see any kind of symptoms you've been having if you're feeling sick and then also in apple news we finally get the audio tab now so in previous versions of ios 13.6 the betas we did not actually have the audio tab down here i just kind of had to show screenshots but now in the gm release we actually have the tab down here for apple news plus audio and this is basically going to read curated articles uh, you know to you so it's going to be kind of like a podcast but it's reading all these articles that you have in here which is pretty cool and definitely a nice incentive to subscribe to apple news plus and i'm just going to show you what the interface is like so let's just go to spike lee meets the moment again and you can see down here it pulls up this little tab at the bottom right here we can go back 15 seconds and play and pause if you tap on that it shows it just like a podcast or like in your music application right there which is pretty neat and of course you can speed it up if you want to down here all the way to 2x just like you can in the podcast application so once again very reminiscent of podcasts you now have that feature inside of apple news and then here's the change log for ios 13.6 so this is going to show you all of the new changes in this update so of course we have the car keys the apple news and the health but there are also a lot of other bug fixes and improvements here as well i'll touch on all these more in depth in the final public release come next week or the following week whenever 13.6 gets pushed out to the public not just to beta testers but there are quite a few fixes as you can see in here and one of the things that i heard a lot about in 13.5.1 was battery drain so a lot of people more than normal reported battery drain and for some reason it seemed like it was the iphone 7 more than any other phone iphone 7 and iphone 7 plus so it'll be interesting to see if that's been fixed that's one of the main issues obviously apple is not going to address that in the change log or anything like that 
But if you are on an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus and you had battery drain on 13.5.1, please let me know in the comments below if it has been fixed for you in 13.6. And of course, I'm gonna be letting you guys know I will be testing it out on my iPhone 7 Plus, you know, now that I have the GM build, and I will report on how it's been treating my iPhone 7 Plus when the final public release comes out. So definitely stay tuned for that. And then another bug that Apple has not addressed is the VPN bug. So if we go in here, you'll see they do mention something down at the bottom about VPNs. It says, provides a mechanism for administrators to specify domains to exclude from traffic carried by always on VPN connections. So that's the only thing mentioned about VPNs. They did not mention anything about the vulnerability that's been going around for a while now that has you know caused traffic you know when you're using a vpn not all your traffic is protected it's not all going through the vpn tunnel and apple is still yet to fix this you know proton vpn were the ones who broke this case and you know wrote an article on it and they have not confirmed that it's been fixed yet so maybe they will release an article when 13.6 gets released the public release so i will keep you guys updated on the vpn vulnerability slash bug as well but as far as performance goes performance as expected is extremely solid here on my iphone 10s max obviously i am using ios 14 now more than anything but I am still using iOS 13.6 on the 10s Max here, and it has been great. I actually ran some Geekbench tests here as well, and you can see the scores I got right there. So we had the previous beta down here on June 30th. We had 1117 single core and a 2719 multi core. And then now you can see we have an 1116 single core and a 2745 multi core. So we do have a slightly better multi core score but the single core is down by literally one point. So it does seem to be a little bit better than the previous beta, but overall, as you can see down here from April 7th, it is a nice jump from you know previous versions of iOS. So 13.6 definitely should give you a nice boost in terms of performance. I've also been testing the iOS 13.6 betas on my 2018 iPad Pro. So this is my 2020 iPad Pro, which is on iOS 14 or iPad OS 14, but I do have iPad OS 13.6 on my 2018 iPad Pro, and I've also been using that you know, throughout the past couple of weeks, and it's also been very solid on the iPad. Now, in terms of battery life, battery life has also been pretty good for all devices here on 13.6, and I would expect the same in the GM build here as well, and also the final public release as well. Again, the only one that I'm kind of concerned about or kind of questioning is the iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Hopefully the battery drain issues are fixed, but we won't know until you know a couple of weeks from now when users that are not public beta testers or developers will be able to test it out and let us know if their battery drain issues have been fixed. But overall, should be pretty good in terms of battery life. So now when can we expect the final public release of iOS 13.6? And I would think that it would be next week. And I would think it'd probably be mid to late next week since we should probably be seeing a new iOS 14 developer beta on either the 13th or the 14th. So that means that we could see iOS 13.6 on the 15th or 16th. That is very possible. Or we could even see it pushed to the week of the 20th. Apple has been very unpredictable lately, so it's really hard to tell. But I would not be surprised to see a new iOS 14 beta and then also the final public release of 13.6 next week, the week of the 13th. And then, of course, since the public beta came out today, a lot of people are now public beta testers. And if you are a public beta tester on iOS 14, you will get the same update. Developer beta 3 will be the same as I guess it's going to be public beta 3 now as well, since public beta 1 was called public beta 2 for some reason. So the public beta testers will probably get the update. It's possible the next day to get the update. So one day after developers get it, or it could be as long as the next week until public beta testers get that update. So we'll have to wait and see. Once again, Apple is unpredictable. You don't really know what to expect from them at any time. So that's why you guys keep it locked to my channel so you can stay informed. But yeah, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.6, the GM build. I will have additional details in the final public release video, my what's new video on 13.6 whenever that does come out. So definitely stay tuned for that. I will talk more about the performance, battery life, and a little bit more in depth about the features as well. I just didn't wanna make like the same video twice. So that's pretty much it guys for 13.6. I hope you did enjoy it. Let me know if you are on 13.6 still, or if you went up to iOS 14, let me know also how 13.6 has been treating you if you are on this firmware. And of course, as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future iOS content. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.